From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Representative Zoe Zephyr is banned. We'll have all the details on this unprecedented action in the Montana legislature. This body witnessed one of its members participating in conduct that disrupted and disturbed the orderly proceedings of this body. Plus, from Lockwood to Hardin, Tobin Navazio says he's ready for a new challenge. Expand what they're able to do there and bring some, do some good for kids down there. And you've never seen a final exam quite like this. We'll show you some of the cool curriculum at Little Bighorn College. Good morning to you all and welcome to Montana this morning on this Thursday, April 27th. I'm Augusta McDonald. This morning when the Montana House begins its next floor session, Missoula Democrat Representative Zoe Zephyr's seat will be empty. After a vote without any historical precedent, the state's first and only elected transgender politician is banned. She'll be allowed to vote on bills remotely, but will not be permitted to speak or enter the House floor, the gallery or the ante room of the House. We're going to take some time to get through all of the facts of where we got to uh, this morning. So first, let's go over how we got here. Last week, lawmakers were considering a bill to block gender affirming care for trans kids. Representative Zephyr believes passing that legislation will contribute to risk of suicidality and self harm among transgender youth. She said this. I hope the next time there's an invocation, when you bow your heads in prayer, you see the blood on your hands. House Speaker Matt Regeer said it was this comment that broke the rules of decorum. He decided he would not be recognizing Representative Zephyr until she apologized. Zephyr refuses to say sorry to this day, so during the next floor session when she requested to speak, Regeer, as promised, refused to call on her. Now let's fast forward to Monday. Zephyr supporters gathered at the Capitol protesting Regeer's decision. They filed into the gallery. Zephyr tried to weigh in on a bill and Speaker Regeer again refused to call on her. Then this happened. Notice Representative Zephyr here in this moment, holding her mic up as the crowd chants. Republicans say it's one of the deciding factors in their decision to discipline her, saying she encouraged the protest. Seven people were arrested during the protest. It led House leadership to cancel Tuesday's session. That brings us up to what happened yesterday. Republicans in the Montana House voting to ban Zephyr, citing her actions during the protest, as we showed earlier, holding her mic up. Zephyr, who was allowed to speak while lawmakers considered banning her, explained why she did that. And why I raised my microphone to amplify their voices, to make sure that the people who elected me here are heard. And that when this body seeks to pass bills, that harm our community, that get us killed, that this body is held accountable. It takes two thirds majority vote to discipline someone. Even with every Democrat to staunch no, Republicans had the votes. Zephyr's disciplinary consequences are considered a censure and don't climb to the level of an expulsion. But discipline like this hasn't been seen in Montana since the late 1800s, as former MTN political reporter Mike Dennison explained to me. I've seen many instances where someone is not recognized on the floor or where the, the chair of the body refuses to recognize someone for various reasons. And they might be mad at what they're saying. You know, this, this happens on occasion. This situation, though, is a little different. Now, Democrats say disciplining Representative Zephyr for her blood on your hands comment is peak hypocrisy. You'll remember a couple legislators even left a debate last month when a Republican lawmaker said this about abortion. In California, um, Satanists have stated that it's a religious right to abort their children. I'm should going it, to recommend that it. the minority not participate in the remainder of this discussion if we are going to Satanism. Thank you. Republicans counter by saying it wasn't just Zephyr's comments that got her banned, but actions during Monday's protest. So we need to ask the question, what happens next? I spoke with an ACLU attorney who's watching this entire situation very closely. They tell me legal action is a possibility. While the Montana House creates its own rules, they must be enacted and enforced in line with the U.S. and the state constitutions. And those constitutions contain explicit protections for free speech that extend to legislative debate, uh, even when that debate involves unpopular perspectives. There is legal recourse available under United States Supreme Court precedent to ask a judge to overrule the actions undertaken by the Montana House and ensure that she is allowed to speak in an unfettered manner and or be reinstated in her seat.
There's no indication if any legal action will be taken, but this situation is making headlines nationally. Coming after our show on CBS Mornings, Carter Evans will be reporting live from Helena with even more details and reaction from the Capitol. Um, lots to follow with this, lots of different details to understand, and also a lot to follow in terms of um, all of the other work that still needs to be done in the next seven days before the end of the uh, session, which includes passing that big $14 billion budget bill, which has not been approved yet. So with that, let's transition a little bit to what you're calling this morning a speed bump in the yeah, coming a, good temperatures. Good, yeah, well, we do have a really nice uh, stretch of weather on the way. We're talking 70s for the weekend, maybe some 80s next week, but we do have a speed bump today. Cold front coming in from Canada with an area of low pressure is going to give us mountain snow, lower elevation rain. It's going to cool us down today and it's going to be quite windy. So a lot of stuff to talk about. And we'll do that with the main forecast coming up. But yesterday turned out to be another gorgeous day. Our high got up to 67 above average. Our overnight low just above average as well. It was windy yesterday, but it's really going to be stronger today. We could see gusts anywhere from 40 to 50 miles an hour across the entire Q2 viewing area as the day progresses. Uh, another dry day yesterday. You can see the moisture totals in the hole for the month and now in for the year. Snow totals, well, we're not going to catch up to that this month. Uh, we're still slightly ahead of where we are, but pretty much on target where we should be for the season. All right, let's talk temperatures out there. We're at 54. We may get a little warmer than that this morning, and then we could see those temperatures fall into the 40s today as that cold front comes in. Wind's starting to pick up now. We just had Augusta uh, near 20 at the airport. Right now they're out of the northwest at about 12 miles an hour. You can see where the rain is at the moment, and uh, we're not seeing any, any right now in Billings, but it's coming. Temperatures right now in the 50s, and again, not much change for some. In, in terms of those temperatures. In fact, we may get a little colder, but then high pressure takes over. We warm up for the weekend, which is looking fantastic across the area. We'll take a look at that coming up here in just a bit. All righty, Miller, thank you so much. Okay. And we're following up on a story we first told you about yesterday on Montana This Morning. Tobin Navazio resigning as Lockwood School Superintendent. He tells Q2's Haley Monaco why he's stepping away. After more than a decade of work, Lockwood School Superintendent has resigned. It's safe to say the Lockwood School District has seen an immense amount of growth in recent years. So we've increased our student population by about 50%. From expanding the student and staff population to breaking ground on new facilities and remodeling old. Superintendent Tobin Navagio has been a pushing force for the district for the last 11 years. But now a new chapter is in the near future. He will become Hardin's superintendent this July. This was a different challenge at this point in my career and just a, a chance to, to take the things that I've learned and the connections I've been able to, to build over the last several years and be able to, to move to Hardin and see if I can help expand what they're able to do there and bring some do some good for kids down there. He will finish out this school year in Lockwood and it's a historic one for the district. It's a good um, in last chapter for me here to, to end, end with our very first ever high school graduation and uh, having had those kids, you know, basically since they were uh, first graders or second graders. That first graduation has come with a side of controversy that Navatio has had to navigate. It all started with concerns the district would not be recognizing valedictorians. Navatio says the district will be honoring several students with the highest GPAs at the ceremony. And the student with the top GPA will have their photo placed in the school permanently. While he didn't want to discuss that situation further, he says it has nothing to do with his decision to resign. I don't think it's a bad thing for Lockwood either to have a new voice and a fresh set of eyes in, in the superintendent seat and uh, be able to build upon what we've done over the last 11 years. A superintendent certainly leaving a lasting impact as he embarks on a new adventure. We have an amazing team here and that's part of why I feel comfortable leaving is I know the good things that we're doing here aren't going to end with me. In Lockwood, Haley Monaco, MTN News. Thank you, Haley, and a newly passed bill in the Montana legislature helps clear a path for a group hoping to bring a new school to the Billings West End. The idea is students who attend Elder Grove, Canyon Creek, Elysian, and Blue Creek would attend a new high school. The legislation allows those districts to stay independent for kindergarten through eighth grade and combine for high school. Surveys show parents are on board with this plan, but Southwest Billings Smart Growth, the group pushing for this project, says they still have a lot of work ahead to make it happen. The demographic study is a next positive step that would give us information that we need to decide whether we want to put this on the ballot. The group believes the bill passing will help them convince individual school boards who were worried about consolidating their districts. 
And new this morning, South Korea's president will deliver an address to a joint session of Congress today. He's looking to strengthen ties with the U.S. during his week-long trip. Yesterday, President Biden welcomed the country's leader to the White House, where they called their bond unbreakable amid ongoing threats from North Korea. And we're heading to Crow Agency this morning, where a final exam at Little Bighorn College is a lot more hands-on than your typical college test. Q2's Alina Howder shows us how students are connecting with their roots and making the grade. Students at Little Bighorn College have a tough final exam. Three separate classes are competing to see who can make the best TP the fastest. It's a project designed to teach Crow students more about their roots. Hey. This isn't a typical final exam, but this isn't your typical college campus. The loser has to give a speech. These students from three separate classes at Little Bighorn College are competing to see who can build the fastest and sturdiest TP. Oral history. TP rings that you find, they were carbon dated back to about 5,000 years or more. So we've had to lodge more than 5,000 around in that area. Levi Yellowmule is an adjunct professor who teaches Crow oral literature. I think that through college, uh, we could teach the young people how to do it and, and tell them the origin of it. And, uh, and then they can turn around and they can talk about it. It's something his students, like Sean Backbone, appreciate. I love it. I love, I love that who I am, where I come from, that's where I come in and gives you a better sense of uh, why I'm here. Especially since many fear that their crow culture is vanishing with each generation. There's only like 2,000 crow speakers. And, you know, if you lose your language, you know, your culture goes with it. It's classes like Levi's that teach younger generations about the traditions they might not have learned growing up. Each teepee here is built with lodgepole pine and took just 20 to 30 minutes to put up. And every pole has a significance. The covering has significance. It, it has a story to everything. It's about life and nature. As we get older, it's up to like us to keep it alive. Macaria Pine is this year's Miss Crow Fair. She's made it her mission to immerse herself in her culture. Our teepee it belongs to the woman because back then the woman, they did all of it. They put it up. They took it down, they moved it, they did all of it. Macaria's class actually won the competition, but for Levi, the contest served its purpose. It means a lot to me. It, it uh, makes me feel enlightened that I could be able to share my knowledge with these younger people. In Crow Agency, Alina Howder, MTN News.